how many of us are actually just like the people that Luke talks about this morning in his baptismal story of Jesus? Every one of the people was standing there and they were talking to John. They were with John and all of them were wondering in their hearts if John was the Messiah. They're all looking for somebody to come and save them. Someone to be there as their savior, as the person who's going to make everything right. How many of us, how many of us are there? We want somebody to come into the world that's going to make everything right. Right? Is it especially here and now as we're nine months away from an election? I'm not talking politics. Don't worry. <laughs> but we're nine months away from an election in our country, right? And what is it that we look for every time that we elect a new president? Somebody who's going to come in and fix everything. We want a savior. We want somebody who's going to come into our lives and make everything perfect. If we're single, maybe we're looking for somebody that's going to come in and be the person who's going to make life mean something. And if we're married, maybe we're hoping that... No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? We want that person to come into our lives that's going to make everything right and, and straighten everything out and make the world perfect. Well, you know what? It's already happened. You don't need to be looking for your savior because you've already found him. And I can guarantee you that because otherwise you wouldn't be sitting where you are this morning. You'd be doing something else. Each and every one of us here has a thought in our mind that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the savior of the world. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. But the question that I have to ask is, does that really make a difference in your life? Yes, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is our Savior. He came to this world, became a human for each and every one of us, took on our nature and our lot, suffered and died on a cross for each and every one of us so that we can have eternal life. Something that's going to happen, well, is happening right now, but something that's going to happen sometime later. But does that make a difference on us right now? Right now. Does that make a difference? All of you know, or most of you probably know, that I love coffee. I love coffee. Most of you don't know, though, and Carrie is quite surprised to know, that I didn't drink coffee from the time that I left here on Christmas morning until I got back on January 3rd. Not on purpose. We were at, we were at my in-law's house, and they don't have coffee makers, so it was purely out of me not getting out of the house to go buy any. So it's, it's all okay, though. I'm fine. I survived. It's all good. But I know of this, this one brand of coffee that costs $300 a pound. I've never had any. It's $300 a pound. It is Cope Luca coffee. Cope, Cope Luca, K-O-P-I-L-U-W-A-K. Cope Luca Coffee. It's found in Indonesia, specifically on the islands of Sumatra, Java, Bali, and Sulawesi. Something like that. Sumatra and Java. Java being the island that we get the name Java from, right? Coffee beans are good from Indonesia, but this specific kind of coffee is a rare coffee because it gets its, and that's where it gets its name from. Copa is the Indonesian word for coffee. And lu, lu, luak is the Indonesian word for cat, I believe. I might be wrong on that one. But it's, this coffee comes specifically from the civet cat. That is a nocturnal animal that goes out every night. And what does it eat? The best coffee beans that it can find. It doesn't eat you know, the bad ones. It eats only really good coffee cherries and coffee beans. And then the next morning, exactly, people go out and harvest the coffee beans because the beans themselves are not digested by the civet cat. They come out. <laughs> this coffee costs $300 a pound, people. <laughs> Because it's digested partially by a cat. Right? It sounds a little bit weird. And a little bit disgusting. 
but they say it's really good coffee. How many of you eat honey? Do you know what honey is? <laughs> now you're not going to eat honey the rest of the day, at least. And so, right? There's a lot of things in this world that are just completely disgusting when you first think about it. Like we eat the poop of a bee. We stir it into our tea and it makes it taste delicious. Right? And yes, I did just say that and it's recorded for all prosperity. So there you go. Right? These are things that are really weird and disgusting in our world. And to this morning we have one of those things that we have prettied up in the church and we talk about it almost every time that we talk about a baptism. Right? And we have one here on our wall. Right? What is this image up here on the wall? It's a dove. What is a dove? It's a bird. I've actually talked about this before. Is somebody remembering here? Yeah. Right? Does a, does a dove actually exist? No. Dove as a species does not exist. The dove is not a species of bird. What is a dove? A dove is a white pigeon. It's a white pigeon that we have renamed a dove to give it a pretty name to not talk about what it actually is because a pigeon is a? Flying rat. Exactly, a flying rat. They eat whatever they can get their hands onto, they dig through the trash, they do whatever they can to get food. And we use this as an image of the Holy Spirit. And why? It's, a, in my opinion, it's probably one of the most appropriate images that we can give to the embodiment of the Holy Spirit. Because when we, we want to think about God coming to us and we want to think about us coming to God, we think we have to have our lives completely together and everything back and perfectly in line before God's going to allow us to come into a sanctuary and be a part of who he wants us to be. Which is a load of baloney. Honey. <laughs> right? It's a load of honey. We don't have to be perfect in order to come to God. And God taking on the form of a pigeon is great because that shows us that he can take what we see as ugly and dirty and nasty and take it from being a garbage can or a trash can and turn that into a treasure chest. He can take each and every one of us from where we're at, regardless of, of what we've done or where we've been, and take us out of the mire and make us to be something beautiful and shining in his eyes because he's the one who's doing it. Because each and every one of us, as we were washed in those waters at baptism, as we're going to watch Nicholas here in just a few minutes, God claims us as his own, empowers us with his spirit, and sends us out into the world, not just as a, as a way of bringing us into this family, but as a way of empowering us to be his light and his love to all the world. He makes each and every one of us a gift to the world, claimed and named by him in those waters. Telling us that no matter what we are or where we've been, that he can turn us into something beautiful. And that, my friends, is the most precious and beautiful news you could ever get. From a bird that doesn't exist, to a coffee bean that's half digested by cats. It's a wonderful news because there's nothing in this world that God can't take and make new and beautiful. If we'll only just sit and stand in his presence and allow him to use our lives the way that he's purposed them to be used. So don't ever think that you're worthless. Because you're not. Because God named and claimed you. And you are his. You are his beloved child. And he is very well pleased with you. And he wants you to go into the world so that everyone can know that they too can be a daughter or son of God, and he will also be well pleased with them.